Construction three is perpendicular through a point on or off the line. And so we're going to see two different examples here, one where the point P is on the line and one where point P is off of the line. So we're going to start where point P is on the line. And you can see that P is not in the middle of segment AB. So our first step is to create two brand new endpoints. So I'm going to start with my center on P and I'm going to close my radius up and then I'm going to swing what I like to call a smiley arc it looks like a smiley face. So I have my smiley arc and I'm going to label the two intersection points as CD. And then I'm just going to kind of cross off through the extra stuff because I don't need those anymore. I want to focus on C and D only now. No longer A and B. So then now that I have those two new endpoints, all I need to do is construct the perpendicular bisector of segment CD. So remember to do this we need to put our center on one endpoint and open up the radius to more than halfway. Then I'm going to swing above and below. And you'll notice here that this time I'm not doing a full arc. All I'm doing are these little baby arcs above and below. And it's perfectly acceptable to do it this way. I just like a full arc um, typically because sometimes you run into an issue like this where your arcs don't cross each other and then you have to go back and reset. It's kind of nice though because we did use the same radius that I don't have to change the radius back but I had to go back so that I can make sure there was a point of intersection there. So now I'm coming back to D and I'm swinging this arc above. So again you're welcome to just do these little baby arcs above and below um, as long as they intersect one another. If you like to continue with the full arc, you are more than welcome to do that. Okay, so then the last step is to construct that line that goes through the middle in order to create the perpendicular line. So here I have these two intersection points, we'll call them E and F. And now all I need to do is line my straight edge up and connect through. So there's a couple conclusions we could make, but the most important conclusion is that now we have a perpendicular line. So line EF is perpendicular to segment AB. Or you could say perpendicular to segment CD. You can only say perpendicular to segment CD if you have these two points labeled. If not, then you can't say it. And now moving on to the second example, where we have a point P that's off of the line. This construction is identical to what we just did, except that P is off of the line. So in order to start this, we're still going to put our center on P. We are still going to swing an arc, um, a smiley arc, to cross AB twice. And you can see here that I kind of did this purposely so that you would have an example um, where sometimes your arc goes way past your line. But notice that this arrow on here means that A, B extends infinitely. It extends infinitely beyond A and infinitely beyond B. So you are allowed to extend your line. So all I'm going to do is line my straight edge up with the given line and I'm just gonna extend it. So now I have two brand new endpoints. So I'll call this one C and I'll call the other one D. I know it looks that like D is right on top of B and you, they could be one in the same point. We don't actually know where B is. It was just part of the labeling for the line that was given. So I'm still calling this D just so I can uh, refer to it. The next step remember is to create the perpendicular bisector. So I'm going to ignore A and B and focus on C and D. If I create the bisector using the same radius that I used for the smiley arc, it will pass immediately through the middle, but I may not get nice intersection points. So remember, when you do the bisector, perpendicular bisector, open up your radius to about three quarters of the way of the given segment. And I'm swinging above and below. You can see here that I've done my full arcs, so I don't run into the issue that I had the last time, where my arcs did not intersect. I'm keeping the same radius as before and now I have two points of intersection say E and F 
And then again, the last step in this construction is to create the perpendicular line. Because we use point P as the center, your perpendicular line should pass through point P. If it doesn't, then you did something wrong. Maybe you adjusted the radius too much or too little, um, or you you know, didn't put your center right on the point. You maybe moved it over on accident. So if it doesn't go through the center, just walk yourself through those steps of the construction one more time. And again, we can make a conclusion here that line EF, is perpendicular to segment AB, or to line AB rather, because remember it extends infinitely in both directions.